Hey everyone, and welcome to a special episode of NFI Hammer. So for those that haven't been following along in my journey, uh, three months ago, I'd never looked at a miniature. I haven't painted anything since finger painting in kindergarten. Um, yeah, never really attempted the hobby at all. And my wife got me some Warhammer uh, for Christmas because uh, I've been interested in it in a long while and I hadn't really been brave enough to get started. Uh, that was mainly due to all the videos on YouTube that I was watching. People were just so phenomenal and so talented. And I was like, there's no way that I could ever get to that level. Um, and there was no videos I saw of actual beginners attempting and failing and doing that sort of stuff. So I thought, you know, why don't I document my experience? So go check out my videos. Uh, I've made lots of fails and lots of mistakes along the way, but I'm having a lot of fun and the community is so welcoming. This is a special episode because what I'm doing is I'm taking you behind the scenes um, and showing you how I put these videos together. So, you know, in addition to me having no idea what I'm doing about miniature painting, I also have no idea about YouTube videos um, and how that whole content creation works. And so I've also just been figuring that out as I go. So if you want to see how I do it, uh, got any advice or any tips, um, please leave a comment below. So here is where most of the magic happens. So this is just our dining room table. I think it's like a box log from Ikea. Um, and you can see that it's got some good natural light, which is really helpful when you're painting during the day. Um, and yeah, I just think that it helps you kind of see what colors and uh, what the model looks like. I've also, you can see that I've kind of got this white box at the end. Um, so originally the table was covered in Warhammer and painting materials, but it's getting a bit um, out of control. So let me take you closer and show you what's inside. So this is another IKEA product. It's just a white stackable storage container from IKEA called a Cugis, I think. So you can see in here, I've kind of just jam pack all of my painting supplies. So I've got my dry palette and my wet palette. Um, I've also got uh, my static glass uh, applicator where I kind of um, hang them upside down and I use the blue tack to keep them upside down. I just got my cheap um, and medium priced um, paintbrushes as well as my plastic straw and my blood spatter um, thing from the video I did last week. And yeah, just on my paints, um, my little custom holding handle gives you the good uh, 360 degree spin and uh, stick the model on the top. Um, I've also got my Cryptex spider here, which I haven't found a good home for him yet. And my plastic glue as well here. So yeah, it just kind of keeps everything all kind of packed away and neat and tidy so it doesn't take up too much room in the house. Uh, I'll probably get a better um, setup for it eventually, um, but for now this has been keeping things kind of contained and in one place. Next to my uh, storage container, I have this little bit of packing styrofoam that I've kind of uh, sticky taped together and I've cut a hole through here. And so I actually stick my phone in there and that's why this section here is being cut out and it kind of um, allows you to film in in sort of a downward straight direction it's uh not very good and so i've upgraded now to an actual proper phone holder but for a long time this was what i was filming everything on um to hold my phone straight and steady and you can see here i just put all the uh, sprue cutoffs and um stone from the base uh, just junk, just storing it in there, it's sort of like a trash bin. And finally on the table I have this Lane Speller, I think is what it is, but it's another Ikea lamp. Um, and it also comes with a phone holder, which you can't see because it's being used. Um, but it allows you to kind of position the lights. Um, it also has different strengths and different um, kind of colours, like bright white to like an orangey glow. And then the phone camera as well can be like moved around and positioned um, up like this um, and different angles. I also have this sheet of white paper 
that I use um, sometimes when I'm painting the models and I want to contrast it against the white colour. But yeah, that's pretty much what my table and setup looks like. So when I'm painting the models like this, I'm just recording. I'm using my iPhone 14. Uh, it has a really good camera built into it. And so I'm just recording um, usually at 0 0.5 zoom so that you can see everything. Or sometimes, you know, I zoom in closer and then even closer again. Um, but you can also zoom in later in using the tool that I use to put the videos together, which I'll show you in a minute. And you can also, as I mentioned before, change like the brightness of the light, as well as like the intensity. Um, but the iPhone kind of auto corrects it, so it's hard to notice the difference. And I also used to film in a time lapse mode. So iPhones come with an ability to um, speed things up, but I've been having troubles using those time-lapse videos in my video editor, so I've just been recording everything in real time and then speeding it up in post. However, that does make a lot of the videos, you know, like 300 megabytes long because, you know, it's quite long. <laughs> it takes me a long time because I don't know what I'm doing to paint everything. Um, but yeah, let me show you how I edit the videos. So then I copy the files onto my computer just by plugging it into my cat fur infested PC. And then I just copy all the video files um, from the iPhone storage onto my local storage. Then I open up this tool called ClipChip. So it's a free tool from Microsoft. There is a paid version, but I haven't needed to use it yet. Um, I find it's a pretty powerful uh, video editing software, especially for free. Um, so once I've opened it up, I won't go into too much details, but I import uh, my video files into the left there, and then I just drag them down to the bottom and put them in sequence. And then you can also add like little text things, so I do that for the different colours of paints that I'm using. Two of the main video editing features that I use in this is the ability to kind of just pinch and zoom a video file so that you can kind of zoom in easily into a certain section. So usually when my camera is a bit zoomed out or not centered, I can just quickly uh, move the video file into place so that it's in the center of the shot or as close to it as I can manage. And then the second feature I use is this speed thing on the right hand side here. So this is where I can, um, you know, speed up my painting efforts because it takes me a very long time as a beginner. Um, so I can sometimes go up to 16 times speed uh, if I'm spending a really long time doing something. Um, but here you can see that I'm just doubling it just so that it, you know, um, is more interesting and less tedious to watch. So because the videos are sped up, I can't record the audio at the same time. So what I do is I use this other tool to record the audio after I put the video together. I also use this tool Audacity. So this is a free software that you can download online and it just allows you to record your voice. And I find it's helpful because it has a couple of cool features. Um, so for example, uh, you can remove background noise, you can increase the volume, and you can also, if you can be bothered, go through and, you know, cut out any ums and ahs and stuff in the audio. So let me show you how to do that. So what you do is you select some um, kind of background noise, and you go here down to noise removal and repair, and then noise reduction and it will generate a no noise profile based on that. And then you can uh, apply the noise reduction to the entire audio. And then what I also do is I go to volume and amplify and just amplify it up a bit so that it's easier to hear what I'm saying. And then once you're all ready, uh, you can export the audio, you know, as um, the sound to import back into ClipChamp. So to import the file, all you do is just need to do the same as the video files and just drag and drop that into the left hand side here. And then once it's imported into the project, you can just drag and drop it down the bottom 
because it's one continuous audio file for the whole video, it's pretty easy to do. It's a lot easier than um, messing with individual video files. And then when you're ready, you just export the file and upload it to YouTube. I've also been experimenting with doing custom thumbnails using this free website, Snapper. Um, I've not actually found good success with thumbnails. I find that actually the videos where I don't use it have higher um, view counts. So if you've got any ideas or suggestions what I'm doing wrong in my thumbnails, um, please let me know. But hopefully you found this video uh, useful. I've only uh, been doing this, as I said, for about three months now. So before this, I've never really painted a single model before. I never really recorded a custom YouTube video or anything like that. So if you like my painting or you like the behind the scenes, please uh, you know, drop me a like or a subscribe. It really means a lot. Um, and yeah, thanks everybody for watching. See you next time.